Assalamu alaikum. I am your mama. My friends and I in a third medical year will introduce you to a brand new cell, the persister cell, supervised by Dr. Asma and Dr. Zina. Please give us your attention and we hope you enjoy it. Our objectives today, the definition of the persister cell, when and how does it form? The biofilm and its relation with the persister cell? Anti-persistent therapy? Finally, the conclusion and perspective. In the presence of antibiotics, bacteria will develop different defense mechanisms, such as produces resistant cell and Persister cell. Wait, what does persister cell mean? And what is the difference between them and the resistance cell? Well, resistant bacteria cell adopt different survival resistant mechanisms, such as target changing through mutation, while persister cell are defined as a dormant cell, and a dormant mean inactive, no cell function. That's formed within a biofilm that is highly tolerant to antibiotics. In the other word, those cells tend to sleep in the presence of antibiotics without any genetic changes. When was the first time we describe persister cell. In 1944, Joseph Bigger was the first one to define the persister cell when he was studying the effectiveness of penicillin on staph aureus, where, where 1% of the bacteria were able to survive the penicillin. In 2000, Kim Lewis rediscovered the persister cell when he studied the time depending culling of the bacteria inside the biofilm. That was a brief history about persister cell. Assalamu alaikum. I am Maryam Khalid and I will explain to you how do these persister cells form. So now we have the formation mechanism of persister cells. The main model for the formation of persister cells is that toxin antitoxin pairs, as they induce a state of dormancy that enables cells to escape the effects of antibiotics. So, we should know the meaning of toxin antitoxin system. Toxin antitoxin systems typically consist of a stable toxin, always a protein, that disrupts an essential cellular process. In other meaning, it disturbs the antibiotic target within the cell and a labile antitoxin, either RNA or a protein, that prevents toxicity. This means that when persister cell is exposed to antibiotic, it will produce toxin that will disturb the antibiotic target within the cell and in the same time the bacteria also will produce antitoxin, which will protect the cell from the effect of its toxin. So, there is balance in this mechanism. But, how does this balance occur? Actually, this process occurs by gene that encodes for toxin, which is a protein, and bacteriostatic in action, and is counterbalanced by antitoxin RNA that could best bear with the toxin mRNA and form the duplex to balance the effect of toxins. So, antitoxin RNA will interrupt the action of toxin gene and in this creative plan, the cell will protect itself within the biofilm. Hi, I am Rashad Fuad. Since the beginning of our seminar, we've been talking about biofilms and persisters within biofilms. So what is biofilm and what does it have to do with persister cells? 
Biofilm is a community of microbial cells that grow on living or even inert surfaces and surround themselves with secreted polymers. This polymer is called the matrix, which is composed of polysaccharides, proteins, and nucleic acids, hugging them all together. In biofilm, there is a great metabolic cooperation, which increases the cell's survival through improved defense and increased the availability of nutrients and better environment and opportunities for the transfer of genetic materials. So, as if they hold each other's hands, and follow the rule of one for all and all for one. Now, persisters within biofilm. Persister cells are much more abundant in biofilm than in a planktonic culture or free form. The matrix of the biofilm shields the persister cells from our immune cells. The ability of a biofilm to limit the access of the immune cell system component and the ability of persister cells to sustain an antibiotic attack could then account for the recalcitrance of such infections in vivo and for their relapsing nature as well. When antibiotic level drops, these cells repopulate again into the susceptible phenotype, yeah, but with some persister cells as well. So it acts as a seed bank to survive the rapidly changing environment around it. Now, do you think we are overreacting about the danger of persister cells? Unfortunately, no. This type of cells is mainly present in chronic infections caused by bacteria or fungal infection that form biofilms. So they are the source of many of the recurrent bacterial and fungal infections that affect people, for example, those associated with implanted medical devices such as heart infection, endocarditis, and potentially deadly example is cystic fibrosis associated lung infections primarily caused by Pseudomonas aeruginosa. In this cool chronic infection here within a biofilm, where there is different kinds of bacteria, different species, and even different susceptibility. You can see here the susceptible bacteria wandering around and the resistor cells here, the stubborn resistor cells holding their guns which is genetically con controlled and those sleepy guys here. Now I want you to think about the, the antibiotic as coronavirus for the community of bacteria, okay? Think about the antibiotic as coronavirus for the community of bacteria here. Now, when this virus attacks this community, who will be killed first? Those careless, susceptible bacteria which is wandering around will be the first to be killed. What about the resistor cells? Well, if there is a super virus with some mutations or whatever, even those resistor cells will be killed. Who survived the oldest battle? Well, those dormant who stay home won't be recognized by the virus and unfortunately will be able to survive. Wait a minute, Rashad. Although that annoying cells survive and repopulate, we will never surrender. Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Zahra Akram and I came up with the weapons. We have anti-persistent therapy. First of all, we have drugs act by targeting persistent cells and killing them directly. For example, HT61 antibiotic, which is a small fluoroquinolone based compound with bactericidal effect on the dormant phase of gram-positive organism, particularly staph aureus bacteria. As we see in the figure, a group of gram-positive staph aureus bacteria being targeted by the gun of HT61 antibiotic that try to disrupt their cell wall and membrane. Secondly, instead of directly killing our targets, we try to wake them up. In the presence of some specific molecules, such as pyruvate and the canoic acid, 
Those stars can transmit from their dormant phase to metabolically active cells. So now they are susceptible to many antibiotics. This effect has been demonstrated in Pseudomonas aeruginosa and E. coli. The third mechanism is by inhibiting the formation of persistor cells from the beginning. Persistor form Persistors formation inhibitors such as M64 inhibitor, the addition of this inhibitor to an antibiotic lead to clearance of acute infections as well as prevention the recolonization of these cells. Finally, we have a brand new therapy, silver combination therapy. Novel antipersistent therapy such as silver treatment. Silver show antimicrobial activities. And a new study shows that the silver can be used in combination with other antimicrobial agents in order to potentiate the action. Hi, I will summarize everything for you. Resistors are phenotypic variants of regular cells in bacterial populations and are highly tolerant to multiple antibiotics. Persistors remain in a dormant state and are able to survive high doses of antibiotic treatment. A poor removal of antibiotics, persistors start to grow like regular cells as a consequence of phenotypic switching. Persistor cells are thought to be responsible for recurrent and chronic infections, which pose a significant threat to public health. Therefore, it's urgent to fully understand the formation and physiology of persistor cells and to develop medicines and strategies for the eradication of them. We think that, with an improved understanding of how persistor cells form, we may be in a better position to wake them and make them more susceptible to antibiotics. Antipersistent therapies could be the help in reducing chronic infections. Those are our up-to-date references.